What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS and iPadOS 26.1 to the general public after more than a month of beta testing. So in this video, we're going to discuss everything new in the update, including the new features and changes, the performance, the battery life, and if you should update or not. Okay, so let's start by talking about what's new in this update. And the first feature is one that I was not expecting Apple to do. So if you go into our settings here and go down to display and brightness, you will notice we have a brand new section right here called liquid glass and it says choose your preferred look for liquid glass so if you go into here you can see you can now choose what type of liquid glass design you want system wide so whether you want it to be clear which is more like the original the intention of liquid glass or more tinted where it's kind of more of a frosted glass and you can see the ui elements a little bit better and just to show you a comparison this is what the clear toggle looks like this is what the notification center bubbles on my lock screen look like if we change that to tinted take a look at the pretty big change to how that looks right here on the lock screen so set that to your preference and that will affect the ui throughout ios 26.1 including in music when you go down here and you go to music and you start scrolling you can see how that looks so this is what tinted looks like take a look at behind that box right there you can see the background a little bit it's a little bit more subtle and if we change this over to clear and we go back into music you can see it's a pretty big difference there it looks a lot more clear a lot more modern with the clear solution Selection. There's also a change to liquid glass if you're in dark mode. So now when you're in dark mode and you go down to a navigation bar at the bottom before in iOS 26.0, when you would tap and hold on one of these menu items and kind of scroll over like that, you will notice that there's much more of a highlight. It kind of brightens up the entire nav bar. But now in 26.1, that highlight is gone or it's a little bit more subtle. And now you don't notice the elements around it brightening up as much so you have to play around with this and you can see the comparison here it's pretty similar but it is a little bit different now we also have some changes in the music application with ios 26.1 so we have some brand new gestures here so if you're on the now playing screen right here and you swipe over you can see you can go to the next song just like that with a simple swipe or you can swipe backwards to go to the previous song quickly and it doesn't have to be on the title you can do it way up here as well it's just a swipe gesture in this upper area of the now playing screen now you can also do this on the bottom the mini bar down here in the music application so you swipe over on that mini bar and it will take you to the next or the previous song it's a really nice gesture and makes it a little bit easier to switch songs also in the music application if you have the auto mix feature turned on where it transitions songs into the next song really well that now works better over airplay so if you're air playing music it will now auto mix better than it did previously on 26.0 also in the music application if we go to the now playing screen and tap on the three dot menu right here we have a new section for go to so before it just said go to album sometimes it would show a couple of things right there but now with ios 26.1 we have go to with a new little arrow glyph icon to the left and when you tap on that it opens up a new sub menu that allows you to go to three different sections so go to playlist the playlist that we selected that from go to the album or go to the artist we'll have to set our icons back to default to show you this next change but if we search for apple tv you can see that with ios 26.1 on the right apple tv has a brand new app icon so it's more colorful more like liquid glass also apple has renamed apple tv plus to just be apple tv now here's another change i was not expecting with ios 26.1 so you guys know how if you go to the lock screen and you swipe from the right side over to the left side how it opens up the camera that's been a gesture on the lock screen for the longest time but now it may not be that way for you because if we go into our settings and go down to our camera settings and scroll down all the way to the bottom we have a brand new toggle that says lock screen swipe to open camera and it says swipe left on the lock screen to quickly access the camera so now that is on by default of course that's been a you know built-in gesture for a while but if you want to disable that you now can from your camera settings so now if we go to our lock screen and we swipe over you can see it does not launch the camera because of course now with the camera control with the action button with the widgets there's so many ways to open up the camera that we don't really need another way to do that on the lock screen if you don't want to so now with 26.1 you 
get that option. Now, moving over to the lock screen, when you go to customize your lock screen photo, you will see that we have a change down there at the bottom. So the dots are now much lower on the screen. Also, there's no background behind the page dots right there. And also natural is now in the center instead of being higher up on that section there. And also when you first go to customize the lock screen photo, you can see that pinch photo to crop now shows up. So it says pinch photo to crop instead of pinch to crop. There's also a new glyph icon that's animated to the left. It's also higher up on the screen and it shows up a little bit after what it did before. In the photos application, if we select multiple photos, we now have an X in the top right instead of it saying cancel. Also, if we tap on the three dots right there, we have a new little section up top for play as slideshow, favorite, and hide. So those now have their own separate section up top. And you can see that before it said add to favorites. Now it just says favorites. Also screenshots now appear as viewed out when you tap on them. So you can see 26.0 on the left. It shows it in full screen with the nav bars kind of covering up everything and you can't really read it. Now it's zoomed out again when you go into it by default. So you can read everything above and below it. And then of course, when you tap on it, it does show it in that full view and it hides the date until you tap again to see it up top. We also have a new video scrubber in the photos application. So take a look at iOS 26.0 on the left, 26.1 on the right. So there's more of a background now with this UI right here. I'll let it play so you can see how it looks when it's playing right there. Also, you'll notice that the volume is now inside of this bar, whereas before pause or play pause and also the volume were outside of the little scrubber right there. So everything's kind of encapsulated in one section now. Also before you could only see the time when you scrubbed it like that and it appeared outside of it. Now with 26.1, you can see that it also shows up in that same little section and it kind of comes out with this little animation when you're scrubbing. So slight difference there in the video scrubber looks a lot smoother and better and kind of just easier to navigate with and see on videos. In the phone application, we now have a liquid glass design for the keypad. So you can see what this looks like right here compared to iOS 26.0 on the left where it had that gray background. It wasn't yet updated to match liquid glass. And also if we go into our settings for phone, we now have a brand new toggle for haptics. So it says play haptics when a call is connected or dropped. That was a default feature that was you know something that happened by default with no way to disable it on iOS 26.0 but now if you don't like those haptics in the phone application you can disable them individually without having to disable haptics altogether we have a brand new way to stop alarms in iOS 26.1 so if we start a timer real quick and we go to the lock screen take a look at the difference between iOS 26.0 on the left and iOS 26.1 on the right so now instead of having a very large stop button which was really easy to basically turn off. We now have a slider where it says slide to stop and we have a little square stop button to the left of it where we have to slide that over like a little button to stop. And you can see kind of the animation, how things get darker as you get close to the end. And that is how you stop a timer now in iOS 26.1. Now this one might be a little bit tougher to notice, but if you go to Safari and take a look at the tab bar, it's now a little bit wider and it also has less padding around the edges than it did in iOS 26.1. If we head into the fitness application, you'll see up in the top right hand corner, we now have a create button. So now 26.1, you can create a custom workout from your phone before you could only do that from, of course, the watch application, but now you can do it from the fitness application on your iPhone. You can create a custom workout right here. You can set the duration, your active calories, your effort, all of that. We also have some interesting UI changes in iOS 26.1. So if you go into a folder, you will notice that the folder text is now closer to the folder itself and it's also left aligned and bold. So before it was higher up, it was centered and it was not bold. And you'll see something similar if you go into certain settings pages with headers, because now you can see for general, for example, we now have general a little bit closer to the gear right there. And it's also left aligned now. And also the font down here is not as dark as it was previously. So it's more of a lighter gray color. So it differentiates a little bit more from the header. And again, you'll see this throughout iOS. So here's what it looks like for accessibility. And even if we go back to like Apple intelligence, you can see that Apple intelligence and in Siri is also left aligned now instead of centered. And actually, if you go back into the display and brightness section that we looked at earlier, you'll notice that the wallpapers up here have finally been updated to reflect the iOS 26 wallpaper. So before an iOS 26.0, it still showed outdated old wallpapers, but now it aligns with the iOS 26. 
6 wallpapers. Now also in our settings, if we go into the general tab right here and then scroll down, you'll see that we have a brand new section for local capture before that was not there. The only way to access local capture before was inside of the control center. So you had to have the toggle added to your you know, control center right there. And this is where you can select audio only and start the recording. But now we have a standalone section inside of settings where you can change the save location right here. And you can have it set to default to audio only when you do a local capture. And if we head back to the main settings page and go down to the privacy and security section and then scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll notice a brand new section down here called background security improvements. And if you go into that, you can see that we have a toggle that says automatically install and it also shows the currently installed security improvements. Now, if you don't know what security improvements are, it's essentially the same thing as the previous rapid security response updates. That's something Apple tried a while back and didn't really go anywhere. So now I guess they're revamping this with security improvements. And it says background security improvements provide additional protection to your iPhone in between software updates. So basically, if Apple pushes out a security improvement update, it will patch up some security vulnerabilities without you having to download a whole new software update like a 26.1.1, for example. So this way, the security issues will be addressed quicker and it'll be a lot easier to install. And and for most people, if you have this turned on, it will automatically install to secure your device automatically. And you'll see that we have the installed one right here. If you ever want to disable this for some reason, you can tap on these three dots right there and you can remove that background security improvement update and restart your phone. Also in our settings, if we go into accessibility and then into display and text size, we have a new toggle here called show borders. So if we go ahead and turn that on, you will see that the button up in the top left now gets a border. So you'll notice that UI elements, especially navigation elements, now have an outline around them to make it easier to see on these screens. And you'll see it right here for search as well inside of your settings, and you will see it throughout iOS. So even inside of music, you can see how everything has more of an outline now, which could be very useful actually for liquid glass specifically. And I'm assuming that this is just an enhanced version of button shapes because button shapes before did something similar where it would underline certain things like that. You can see they both under line. However, if you had button shapes on before, it would not do what happens with iOS 26.1 now, where it has that outline around all of the UI elements, all the navigation elements. Now, also with iOS 26.1, more countries and more languages will be able to access Apple Intelligence. So Apple Intelligence is now supported in eight new languages and also for the new live translation feature for AirPods, four new languages have been added for that. Now, as far as the performance goes, I have noticed a slight performance improvement with iOS 26.1 compared to iOS 26.0. So that is some good news if you were on 26.0 and you had some issues, whether that be UI issues with like text and font going crazy or just actual bugs throughout the OS, I have noticed less bugs and just a little bit more stability with iOS 26.1, which is a great sign. Also liquid glass and everything else just seems a little bit more cohesive than it was on the initial build of 26.0. And then when it comes to the battery life, I've also noticed an improvement with battery life on iOS 26.1. So expect battery life to be improved. It's not a major change, but I have noticed a change in my day-to-day -day usage throughout the beta stages. And of course, if you had any type of battery drain issues, that should also be resolved with iOS 26.1. Now, of course, we are also expecting some security patches with iOS 26.1. So at this time, Apple has not published the exact security releases, the exact security release notes for 26.1. But once those are available, and once those are published, they will be linked down in the description below. And that is always reason enough to go ahead and update your device to keep you as secure as possible. But that's only if there are any major ones or really any at all. So now with all that being said, should you update to iOS 26.1 or should you just stay on iOS 26.0 or 26.0.1 if you're on that version. So I would say that for most people, it makes a lot of sense to go ahead and update to iOS 26.1. So we do get, of course, the big change right here inside of our display and brightness for liquid glass. If you were not a fan of liquid glass in general, if you wanted to dial it back a little bit, you can now change that. Of course, we have several other settings and features and changes as well. And also, if you are in another country that was not supported for Apple intelligence before, you will get access to Apple intelligence with iOS 26.1 if you're in one of those uh, you know, countries or if you speak one of those languages that we mentioned earlier. So that's also a good reason to go ahead and update. And if any of those
those don't matter to you. Of course, performance and battery life and also some possible security improvements are also good enough reason to go ahead and update to iOS 26.1. So yeah, especially early on, I typically advise people to go ahead and update, especially because the first build of software like a 0 0.0 or a 0 0.0.1, those are typically not going to be as stable as the later builds in the release cycle. So that's also why I really recommend updating early on in the you know software update cycle like 26.1. Now looking ahead a little bit further, the next big update is going to be iOS 26.2 and I would expect that to get released at some point in December. So we should start the beta testing very soon and we will see that final release most likely at some point in December and that will most likely be a bigger update even than iOS 26.1. So typically with Apple, the 0.2 and the 0.4 updates are the biggest updates throughout the you know release cycle. So expect 26.2 and 26.4 especially to be large updates with a lot of new features and changes. And of course, if you're curious about what's going to be new in those updates, make sure you are subscribed to the channel here because I will be bringing you a video just like this one when those updates get pushed out. Anyways, guys, that is everything new in iOS 26.1. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on future iOS update videos just like this one. Also, let me know down in the comment below, what are you turning on right here in settings, display and brightness and liquid glass? Are you keeping that at clear or are you changing it to tinted? I'm really curious to know what you're doing. So let me know in a comment down below. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.